Coming up next, we have the elegant Netra Pan sharing her nerdy passion for the importance of authenticity. Can we please have a huge round of applause? Woo! One of my Netra favorite Pan. ladies. Hi, everyone. Hope everyone's having a good night. So, my name is Netra, and I'm going to be talking about the importance of authenticity. I'll be starting with the origins of the concept in Western philosophy philosophy as it relates to the self, and then continuing on to its permeation in business and public culture. And finally, I'll be looking at whether technology has affected authentic living um, at all. And I'll be using my phone because, yeah, we'll see. So what do I mean by authenticity as applied to the self? The simplest way to describe it is using this um, definition by the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, being true to one's own personality, spirit, or character. So being authentic is generally something that people aspire to be, uh, genuine uh, as opposed to fake. Um, in the 20th century, the theory, theory of authenticity was born by uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, among others. It was part of a, a bigger movement called the existentialist movement, and it's based on the fact that one should know oneself and act accordingly using that knowledge. Um, Socrates used, uh, was one of the first to say, know thyself, so we can say that this concept dates back to then. And the reason why it's, it's important is because if you don't know, one, your, know yourself, then you can you'll live your life leading um, according to what other people think is important and not according to your own understanding of morality and aesthetics. Um, one of my favorite examples of authentic living is by Immanuel Kant, who was not an existentialist, but he was famous for this thing that he would do every day at 5 p.m., which was go for a walk in his village, which he never left. Um, exactly at 5 p.m., he was so precise that neighbors set their watches after him. Um, <laughs> So he kept his promise to himself, which is acting morally, but he was authentic too, because he made it his own. He uh, did this out of his own free will without um, any societal pressures. So to recap, um, you, can't, uh, you have to know yourself because you can't uh, depend on others, otherwise be, you'll be conforming to their wishes. But you can't be too self-absorbed either because then you'll, you'll be alienated. So you have to have a good uh, balance of the two. Um, so how does one know oneself? I think that the common wisdom today is you have to travel. Um, getting, when you travel, you put yourself in new, uh, new situations, and then you come back, you see yourself, and you see your home with different eyes. Um, I would say that people go to find something that is authentically different, and then come back. <laughs> so how authentic is authentic enough? A, a couple of friends of my mine went to Prevy here for the first time, and we realized we were very difficult because we wanted to discover the real Cambodia, but we found that we really preferred cleaner toilets where you could sit down. And... Uh, so that's, that's uh, one of the uh, problems. Um, would we have rather that we went to the uh, International Colonial Exhibition in Paris in 1931 where they built a life-size model of uh, Angkor Wat? Or would we have rather, uh, rather had a virtual tour? Um, the thing is that nowadays a lot of things are possible due to technological advances. You can see the lady on the right who learned how to take a picture of herself with high quality. So a lot of things have happened, increased technological pro progress, increased globalization. The thing is that uh, authenticity, I think, is much, much more accessible today than it ever was. But it also means that uh, forging authenticity or manipulating it, even making a counterfeit, is also uh, very difficult. So what we have is um, a problem. Uh, as the space becomes crowded, companies lose credibility and they must reinvent themselves in the face of fierce competition to find a narrative that sticks, to be a uh, narrative, sorry, to be authentic and credible. So you can see Pepsi changed a lot while Coca-Cola stayed more or less the same. Technological progress also brought increased uh, transparency with, so with social media. So you can have um, gas promotions from competitors and scandals that become widely known and that give you a lot of trouble. And if you don't take the leap and be authentic first off and try to engage your audience, then you end up having a lot of damage control. So companies try to um, protect their authenticity and defend it. And we found that, well, I mean, I found that some uh, companies, such as DVF, where it's tied to an individual, it's much more easier to be authentic. You can see one of her tweets, I have lived such a full life that I should be twice my age. Love life, love Diane. You know, this is the kind of thing that's interesting. Um, so this is social media explained for those of you who don't understand. Um, <laughs> social media also has the opportunity to bolster a brand. So we had, you know, the opposite effect, as you saw before, with the uh, competitors, but then you had uh, this, 
this side, which makes things more engaging. <laughs> so what about for individuals? Are individuals becoming more authentic with, uh, with the internet and with technology? I based this off a friend of my, uh, an article written by a friend of mine, um, and we found that maybe yes, because public figures and individuals feel pressure to be more radically transparent. If I wouldn't want pictures of something that I'm doing on Facebook, then I probably shouldn't be doing it anyway, a friend of mine said. So um, that's, that's one point of view. Uh, that being said, we have many social networks, right? So if we're uh, someone on LinkedIn and someone else on Facebook, would you think that that's less authentic? I would say no, because when you're with your parents or with your, when you're with your grandparents and with, with your, when you're with your friend, you also act differently. So, so that's that. Um, okay, this one's also interesting too. Um, do we really trust the image that we create for ourselves online? Uh, I know if any one of you have tried, you know, has hesitated while posting a, a profile picture, you know this, this, uh, this to be the truth. Um, but I think, again, you know, maybe we're in a new society where we have different status symbols, except this case, in this case, it's, it's actually a status update. Um, so last summer, there was this study that showed that actually the internet is making people uh, you know, more open and maybe more authentic. So perhaps we just have to wait and see. This is a new stage in our development, perhaps living authentically. Uh, it will happen in the future due to technology after all. I love the way that Breen Brown said it in, the power, in her talk, The Power of Vulnerability, that uh, you have to be courageous. Courage comes from the Latin word core, which means to tell the story of who you are with all your heart. We know that this is very difficult. It's difficult on stage, it's difficult on Twitter, it's on Facebook. Even Sheryl Sandberg had a tough time. So with all these changes, how can you stay authentic? I tried to find a picture of a Cambodian girl, but ended up uh, pressed for time. So this is me. I know. <laughs> I know that I was much, much less, less self-conscious when I was that age. So um, it's just going to be a challenge as technology progresses and globalization progresses to see whether or not we can still remain our true selves. Thank you. Yes, back there, we have one. What's the fakest thing you've ever seen? What's the fakest thing you've ever seen? Like online? Anywhere. Um, oh, man. Well, what I love is there's one of my favorite um, ice cream shops in New York. It's called uh, the Chinese Ice Cream Factory. And it's not, this is the first example I have. It's not really fake, but in their shop, they have a ton of flavors, durian, red bean, taro, you know, all the good stuff. And then they have a section where it says um, exotic flavors, and it's uh, vanilla, chocolate, and that sort of stuff. <laughs> so I really like that. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's fake, but... <laughs> Glasses. Oh, nerd glasses. <laughs> Thanks for that question. Um, Wait, can you repeat the question? <laughs> he said, how do nerd glasses fit into my idea of authenticity? <laughs> There's an inner nerd in everyone. We yeah, just have to like let it so. out. <laughs> it's a true core. Yeah, I think that I think what, what's happening with uh, these glasses is really great because it's encouraging people to yeah, seek out their inner nerd. Although I know that you have 20-20 vision. Do you? <laughs> I wish I'm actually kind of blind. Oh, I needed really? glasses since like fourth grade. Um, <laughs> I just okay, sit out too. the front of the classroom. People think I'm just a teacher's pet, but I only say I'm just blind. <laughs> Which is an interesting discussion, you know, like about nerd night being cool kid night and what does it mean to want to be a nerd and do you only want to be a nerd because it's cool? Oh, these questions. Ponder that. It's becoming more cool, which is good for me. <laughs> <laughs> the nerds take over. I think Asians are also taking over too. While we're in Cambodia, we can say that. It, it's, it's, a, it's a good um, confluence of Asians and nerdiness, right? Like, we're often both. <laughs> so, <laughs> not to like feel stereotypes, but they're always based on a grain of truth. You want to hear a joke? Yeah, tell me a joke. <laughs> okay, how, how can you tell if an Asian has robbed your house? How can you tell? <laughs> okay. Does anyone, Does anyone want to guess? <laughs> uh, 
Okay, your homework is done, your computer is upgraded, and they're still trying to back out of the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think there are no more questions. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you to the awesome Nature Band for all of that and more. <laughs> Can we go out? <laughs>